everyone, it's Karen from Fox in the Garden. I thought I'd take you on a little tour of my actual garden today. It is September and it has survived the humidity and heat of August and probably looks a hot wreck right now, but I thought I'd show it to you anyways. I've had a lot of struggles this year. I've had to redo the whole plan and layout because the area I'm in is under construction. So I had to take all my beds and move them and relocate them and along with the soil, which really like complicated things for me, changed my plan of action. I couldn't plan as much stuff, just was kind of sad. <laughs> but um, I had other struggles too this year that's really slowed me down in the garden, but it's still kicking, it's still producing food, and that's really the ultimate goal here, right? So, um, grew some things, grew some peppers and tomatoes that I'll show you the different kinds. I know I mentioned it a little bit in my last video, but um, I also have some work to do today. I did a little yard work earlier, did some weed whacking, um, but I also need to plant some kale and different things. So I'll talk a little bit about that as well, but let's go ahead and do a little garden tour. So I grew some peppers this year. I have two different kinds. I have California Wonder and I have an Adjavarsky, which is like a roasting pepper, which I really freaking love. My peppers are probably one of my favorite things in the garden right now, just because I have this amazing pepper dip and there's a cat in my peppers right now. Let's see if I can find her. Where is the kitty? Kitty kitty. Cat. Anyways, she's in there. Okay, so this is the Adjavarsky pepper. Let me see if I can pull it out for you. But as you can see, it's this like red, kind of curly cued looking tomato. Oh, I pulled it off, but that's okay. It needs to come. Oh no, there's a cat. This is the Adjavarsky. Delicious with a red pepper dip. Um, and then I also have these California Wonders which are right here. Um, so these pepper plants, there we go. It's not quite red, but it'll get red in the house. So my pepper plants would normally be bigger at this time. However, I got a late start. I had to move the beds. I had to do all these things, but you know what? The world is not perfect. Gardening is not freaking perfect. Nothing ever goes right. And then when you think it's going right, it's going wrong probably. Something is eating it that you don't remember having a pest before the year before. So gardening is not perfection. If you're a perfectionist, gardening is going to drive you insane. And this is my kitty cat. Her name is Elvira. But anyway, so got some peppers from my pepper plants. And my tomatoes are really struggling. They're right over here. Oh, I also have some other peppers. These are my sh So these are my shito peppers. They are great. I don't know if you can see them, but they are great for roasting in a pan, not roasting, but like stir fry. I actually had some for lunch today. You just throw them in with some toasted sesame oil and heat them up. Salt, pepper, throw a little soy sauce in at the end. Throw some sriracha or something on it. So the cat's back. Get her. And, uh, you got yourself a great little snack. So we have a ton of those. I also, these are also what I made the red pepper flakes out of last year. I just had too many and didn't know what to do with them. And while it doesn't have much of a kick, it does provide a lot of flavor. So I've been super excited about that. I'll probably turn some more of them into that. But, but that's what this garden means to me. It is a form of sustainability for me, for sure. So um, while I am not in any way able to support myself solely on the food I produce, it still provides a good 25% of what I eat and and it encourages me to eat fresh and it encourages me to to eat healthier. So I think the garden's important for that. And not only that, but like right now, food sustainability is kind of going in the trash, man. Like if you have noticed since COVID, we have short supply on things and we never know what really is gonna come next. So learning to develop the skill of growing some of your own food, if, even if it's not all of it, is I think super powerful thing we can all do. Maybe not all of us, but a lot of us, um, if you have that capacity. Or we could support our local farmers, of course. Um, so that's another way of doing it. I know that's difficult too, because you know it can be a little pricey, but, but I mean, the world as we know it is certainly changing and 
finding a new way to provide your own food or support others who are producing food that aren't in the big supply chain of things uh, is super important right now. All right, so let's take a look at my tomatoes. So these are the blueberry creams that I had earlier. I did weed whack this clump, yikes. But it might work. Some of them are yellow, I can probably still keep them. But anyway, so I have blue creams. I also have Chadwick cherries, black cherry, Brad's Atomic. Uh, what else did I grow? Oh, the all the big slicers, which I didn't really, I never do well with slicers, but I grew Cherokee Purple and Black Beauty, but neither of them only got a few off of those plants. So they didn't do that great. I probably need to figure out what I'm doing wrong. Oh, and these are the black strawberry ones. Aren't they pretty cool? These aren't ripe yet, but they get this really beautiful purple top to it, which I think is pretty freaking cool. And this is a Brad's Atomic, which sometimes has cooler colors. This one, not so much. I also have a wonky compost bin. Believe it or not, that's a compost bin. Gotta be a couple voluntary tomato plants. So I'm also getting some extra tomatoes from that. I just let it go. Every year I get a cool volunteer plant and I just let it go. I really don't care. It's extra food. I didn't have to do anything to it. And you know what? Way more prolific than these freaking tomatoes I grew. So why not? I have these two cool green stalks here. The beds I had before, I couldn't really grow root veggies in, but these you can. So I usually do like my carrots, beets, radishes, etc. in these guys. However, I didn't get to grow the green beans I wanted to grow and I was really kind of upset about it. So I just went ahead and did some fall bush beans instead. I usually do pole beans, um, but I just threw these Kalima beans in there. Kalima beans are actually my favorite. They're more like a French green bean and they're skinny and they grow a lot of them. So hopefully I have never grown the green beans in here before. So I'm really hoping that they work out pretty well. I also have some Swiss chard, which I need to thin. That's one of my projects today. Um, let's see what else. Oh, I have carrots starting to grow in here. But like I said, a lot of the carrots didn't really take well. I think it was actually the way I was watering it. I didn't have a, like a filter head on my hose. So it just was a poured out water and I think probably mixed the seeds up and made them go too low. So I have to replant them, but some of them did come out. I gotta thin these guys too. So. Um, but I really love these things. I mean, if you had, even though I have a, even though I have a big garden, I still use them. They still serve a purpose and you could always put pollinator plants or something in them. They're accessible for people who want to garden on a balcony or somewhere where they don't have a lot of space, you can grow up. So it's just a cool option. I also grow some of my stuff in these five gallon buckets. And here I have a Kajari melon, which is not going to do anything. It is so stunted in growth. It is not going to produce a Kajari melon before the end. And I also think that there's this Asiatic beetle that's eating these things. <laughs> so every time it tries to produce a fruit, the beetle kind of munches it off. And the same thing is happening with my cucumbers, which I try to grow because I also... Here's my cucumbers. Yep, so the cucumbers I also struggled with this year. I didn't get a place to put them, so I tried to throw them in buckets at the last minute, um, but they kind of drowned a little bit because I didn't have a drill to um, put holes in for a while, so I had to get one of those. And then uh, finally it drained, and then I think I just like had a nutrient issue, and then by the time they grew and produced flowers, this beetle that I always struggle with every year especially on my green beans, uh, came out and it just stops the production of your fruit. So, um, but I'm getting a couple cucumbers off of here. It's not the end of the world. We'll see what happens. It was actually where my chickens were. I used to have chickens in here. They also, now my kids play thing is in there. Yeah, the chickens got eaten, unfortunately. So I think I'm gonna turn this into more garden space and then I'm gonna put the chickens somewhere else because the issue with e the chickens in this place I see I have this big long fence keeps the deer out but the issue with having the chickens in here is that they get into my freaking garden <laughs> and 
it's not such a big deal when the plants are big, but when the plants are little, I definitely have to cover them to keep the chickens out. I don't care what chicken I have. It seems like one of them is always finds a way in the garden. Understandably, they want to eat all the good stuff in there, just like we do. So I had been battling this for a couple of years now. I kept seeing it pop up in the yard. I knew it bloomed around this time of year. I really thought this was Clematis, but it's not. I looked at the leaf and I was like, that does not look like a Clematis leaf because I actually do a lot of Clematis removal. And I realized it's not the right leaf. <laughs> and I was like, all right, well, silly me. Um, but I let it go accidentally this year. And now I'm learning some really cool things about it. So this is actually a plant in the milkweed family. So I started looking around and getting curious because I didn't know what it was. And everywhere I looked, I would find monarch caterpillars. And I was like, what the heck would this be if there's monarch caterpillars on it? And it turns out that this is actually a milkweed vine. And it is a great host plant for monarchs. It also blooms this time of year, so it attracts them to lay their eggs on it versus the other milkweed. So it's really, the other milkweed attracts them earlier in the season, whereas this one will attract the late ones that are migrating. It's just like a milkweed pod that you would find on, say, common milkweed or swamp milkweed. Milkweed. So that was the first sign. I was like, huh, that's strange. I don't usually see those. Here's another pod. It even has the same bugs that you would normally find on a milkweed plant. Ah, ah, there we go, a milkweed caterpillar. That's pretty exciting. I was really stoked when I found this. I was like, how do I not know about it? But I guess gardeners don't really want it in their garden or pollinator fields because it's so viney, but oh my God, this thing is like amazing. I mean, literally before, everywhere I looked, I would see another caterpillar. I mean, I have never even seen that. I have a whole milkweed patches of the common milkweed and don't see this many. Pretty amazing stuff. Oh, look, and then there's one just flying around. I don't know, you can't see it now, but it was over by the golden rod. Yeah, it's just flying around. So, I mean, amazing. Totally keeping this in my garden. It might be a real pain, but that's okay. But to wrap things up, I really grow my garden for me. So I grow it for food. I grow it for the pollinators too, like you just saw. And I grow it because it provides me a sense of joy, gives me a connection to my food in a way that I wouldn't normally have. So when you throw a bunch of tomatoes away <laughs> that you took all year to grow, you have a little more respect for that tomato than you would if you just bought it from the store. So the connection to our food is super important. We totally lose that. Some kids don't even know where their food comes from at all. So knowing our food, being in touch with our food, literally being involved and connected and knowing where it comes from is a valuable thing to have these days. And, and it's rewarding. I mean, it truly is rewarding to work in your garden and see the food you touched, the seeds you put in the ground with your hands come to life and sustain you. Your energy came out, went in the soil, you fed it, you grew it, and now it is nourishing your body. What else is this world about? I mean, that type of connection is just your energy coming right back to you. It's very different when you go to work and you work for your food or you work for the money to buy your food you don't feel that connection. You don't feel like your energy is coming right back to you. Sometimes you work uh, harder maybe <laughs> for that, for a less return on your energy. I always like to think of it that way. How hard am I working? How much energy am I expending in order to receive a return? And is that return as much as the energy I put out? Anyways, I think in gardening for the most part, it is definitely that way. I definitely do not do it to cut costs because it is not necessarily cheaper to grow your own food. However, it is more rewarding and it does connect you and it does mean that you know where your food came from and it does mean that you can depend on your food, especially if you can somehow extend its life or keep it on hand 
for times when you don't have the money to pay for it. Anyways, I wax poetic. Let's get started with some garden work. So up next are reseeding my carrots. So I got some going, but not enough. So I just got this big old bag of their Chatonnay. I think that's how you say it, Chatonnay. Carrots, they're just big orange carrots. I also grew some purple carrots, but they had a really bitter flavor. These are like amazing fresh eating carrots, great for salads. Um, they get pretty big so you can throw them in cooking. I just decided this year just to grow or this fall just to grow them all this way and maybe I'll try some other varieties this uh, spring but kind of just want some freaking carrots because they're amazing and store-bought carrots taste like crap after you start growing your own carrots and the same with this lettuce. Oh my god this lettuce is freaking amazing. I can't even eat store-bought lettuce anymore. Like I have to grow it. I'm probably going to grow it my little indoor uh, seed starting thing this year too but this stuff is which we'll put in in a second cosmic crimson mix from baker heirloom this these seeds are actually from meyer seed company which is a local seed company but they have since gone out of business unfortunately right after covid too i don't know if they don't know what happened but <laughs> that's a wrap guys. We got all the weeding done. Not the most fun chore for sure but we have this terrible grass and it just has to get done or the beds just get ridiculous. Anyway so really I just wanted to share my garden with you today and explain to you why I garden, what my purpose is, and um, why I fell in love with it. And I'm really freaking love talking about it and I don't ever get to talk to anyone about it. So if you feel like geeking out with me on garden stuff totally do it. Totally down for it. But, um, but anyway, so I plan to show you a lot more garden stuff. In all honesty, I was a little embarrassed to show you my garden today because it is not ideal in any fashion. But I also live by the creed that perfectionism holds you back. So just do it, man. If you want to grow a garden, just freaking do it. No matter what the circumstances are, just jump and do it and you'll figure it out. Um, and hey, I got a lot of food out of this crummy garden, at least my opinion of a crummy garden. Um, I've done much better gardens, but um, so don't be afraid, just freaking do it. And, um, but yeah, so eventually I'll share plans with my spring garden. I want to do a lot with this space over here. I want to get chickens again. I want to grow a lot more food. So hopefully I'll be able to share that with you. Thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing and all of that good stuff. I am having a lot of fun doing this. Take care, guys.